Hi, I'm Eddie of Eddie's Wheel for Korea. On today's video, we're going to talk about the topic when it comes to coral warfare. In other words, coral aggression, where one coral attacks the other one by either chemical response or either by stingers. So we're going to go ahead and talk about what constitutes this and why some corals actually get along with each other. Uh, I hope you find it educational and fun. But before, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, and smash that notification bell. So let's take a deep dive into it and check it out. Hold on. Okay, so here we are in front of the tank. I have a close-up shot of the main corals uh, when it comes to this topic. Now, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to give you like a bullet points on the research that I did and, of course, my personal experience on this topic. And then later, I'll show you and I'll point out uh, what I'm talking about specifically. So looking at the tank, as all of you out there are looking, first of all, um, the definition of what's going on of coral aggression, or in other words, coral warfare. Okay, what this actually means is that corals are trying to gain real estate in the reef. Now, the main goal for corals is to spread and gain dominance in an area. Now, coral warfare is produced to either slow or stop other corals from populating its area in order for that coral or coral colony, shall we call it, to continue its growth. Now, two ways of trying to gain dominance, it's either by stinging or chemical warfare. Now, the sweeper tentacles found in most LPS corals would be a stinging example. Now, toxic components found in chemical warfare are secreted into the water and around the neighboring corals, trying to eliminate it. That, of course, one example is polytoxin from Polytoa grandis mushrooms, which I'll show you now. Now, usually corals of the same species tend to get along together like the Euphilia species, except the torch. The torch corals, although being from the same family, they're so uh, potent that they actually will sting their fellow species. Now, ways to avoid uh, chemical warfare would be by either adding carbon uh, to your tank and, of course, frequent water changes. And then one final note would be actually coral placement, which is what I actually did. But now um, I'm going to go specifically to the corals that I had to move. Now, if you look at the intro, you're going to notice that there was a certain coral that I had specifically right right over here and that coral i had to move it to the side why of course that's a L, uh, that's a lps coral and it was actually stinging this coral here now it recovered but right here on this coral you would see like a white spot so that one i uh, i had to move around now the lobo philia which was actually down on the other section of uh, of the tank matter of fact let me uh bring down the uh, camera so you can appreciate what I'm talking about. Hold on. Okay, here we are. Okay, now the Lobo, which you see is down here. Okay, this Lobo was uh, over here. Now what was happening is that with these Ricotta Yuma, they separated and then two lodged to this rock where the lobophilia was so it was actually covering it was actually covering this section of the lobo so although it wasn't technically stinging from the recordia yuma i went ahead and i moved it here i placed it here as you see and then the other coral that was here that had the long sweeper tentacles i placed it back here now the the palitoa grandis are these mushrooms that you see here and these are the ones that create uh, polytoxin. Matter of fact, it's so powerful that when it comes to uh, humans, uh, this can actually uh, land you in uh, the hospital. 
So if you're gonna touch or play around with these corals, you should wear gargles. It's recommended gargles and gloves if you wanna get rid of them or if you wanna cut them down. Okay, now one of the reasons that I also, on the intro, as you notice, I'm talking, uh, you know, I went ahead and I shot a picture of the Hynopora is because this SPS coral uh, has a very powerful sting. So these corals are recommended to actually uh, give them space. And that's where the part that I'm talking about at the end of the bullet point placement. Like here, as you notice, it, it has quite a space from this LPS and from the club polyps. And you have to keep observing them uh, just in case if it gets uh, out of control. And now here you have the placement, the new placement of that coral that was right next to the other one that it was stinging and stinging. So I placed it here, it's doing fine, it's happy. No problem whatsoever. And as you notice right on front, then you have the recorder humus on that rock that they actually uh, separated from the mother colony and then it started to grow and that's where the, uh, the lobo was. And then finally, uh, I try to get the best positioning uh, so you could appreciate the, the best shot, but I'll explain what's going on here with, with all of you out there are watching. Okay, this coral here had, well has a, a branch, it, it's growing tremendously. It has, a, it had a branch out here, but it's, it started to touch the pavona. Now eventually the pavona, they also do have feelers uh, coming out and it was a little more powerful and it kind of like stung. I know you cannot probably see it from your, from this angle, but there was a, a One of these stems and it kind of turned like a little white. So here What all of you are looking at there uh, You can more or less appreciate what I'm talking about Basically about coral warfare and getting too close to each other and that each coral is competing for space so you have the pavona growing, you have this coral, and then on the back, you have the, the fire digi that is also growing exponentially, but it's also getting close to this coral. So I have to keep an eye on it and see what's going on. And if I see an issue, then I would, like I said on the bullet points, coral placement, then I would have to either move the digi or move this one. Well, that's it. I hope you found the video educational, fun, and informative. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up. Of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and smash that notification bell. And like I say at the end of all of my videos, happy reefing. Thanks for watching. And until next time, bye-bye.